Welcome to the PVM Nuzlocke. In this challenge, every boss in RuneScape has been ordered by difficulty, and I'm gonna have to go down the list, killing each boss once. I start with nothing, but I can sell the loot from previous bosses in order to upgrade my setup, so as the bosses get harder, my setup will get better too. I tried and failed this challenge once before and had to forfeit a billion coins, but this time I'm not restricting myself at all. I have access to all of the gear in the game and most importantly, all four combat styles. So this time, if I want to use necromancy, I can. With that said, let's start the challenge. So last time we did this, Mans didn't drop anything for me. The good news is this couldn't be worse. <laughs> okay, so same as last time, we, we just got bones, but that's okay. So the bone sold for uh, 98 coins. Uh, that's definitely not enough money to get anything particularly useful. So we're just gonna, we're gonna keep our 98 GP. Let's grab our Jenica's ring and let's head to the Tormented Wraith. Did I win? All right, please something good. Please something good. Um, okay, that's terrible. <laughs> that's actually trash. Okay, not off to the best start ever. I'm just hoping I have enough GP that I can fill my invent with random stuff. I am ready for the Chaos Elemental. We're gonna get a big Chaos Rune drop. See you, idiot. All right, big Chaos Rune drop. Coming right up. Oh, let's go. Okay, that's actually very good. Okay, you know what? I am so broke. I'm gonna pick up the bones too. Unlike last time where I had to deal with the King Black Dragon without being able to afford an anti-fire, we're rolling in money this time around. So let's grab our one dose anti-fire and get to work. I don't think it's actually going to buy for that, though, is it? Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Let's buy a regular dragon dagger. I think that's a good purchase. This should be a piece of cake. Okay, this is so much easier. Remember last time we had to actually walk KBD? Oh, God. Okay, we still need Mage Prey, it looks like. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay, we'll do a bit of walking. We'll do a little walking. I don't mind. I did not realize that you need Mage Prey. This anti-fire mix? An absolute scam. Uh, I spoke too soon, all right? Please, 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 please. You first. Okay, we're fine. Tactical sign? And I'll be like the first to admit that was not great. But hey, we lived. After the King Black Dragon, let's head to the Giant Mole for a near-death experience and some blood runes. And then fly through a Barrow's Run for some mind runes. After that, we're going to clear out the Hard Mode Giant Mole for another near-death experience and, of course, some more blood runes. That was, like, really bad. I'm not going to lie. This time around, we've got a Dragon Dagger for Bork, so let's make short work of him before clearing out the Calphite Queen. My hit chance is actually surprisingly good, I would say. Like, there's kind of no good way to kill this boss without taking some damage. It's kind of like Vorkath Light. Wait, that slaughter was huge. Okay. All right. Let's just hope Sally the Salamander has got what it takes. Alrighty, Calphite Queen down. I've got to say it, we're getting pretty lucky. After KQ, we've got the Abomination as the last boss fight before we've got to deal with all three Dagonoth Kings in one trip. 77k? Wait, that's actually a really good drop. Last time this almost ended our run, and somehow this time it went even worse. That does actually make it way harder though, that you can't just save spot Rex and get him out of the way. Please stay away. Okay, bad. Guzzle? Are you kidding? No, no. Oh no, he respawned! Okay, wait, hold. Nah, I'm actually about to bob the builder this. Surely he gets stuck, right? What do you mean? Why did they let him walk through walls? I didn't see that in the patch notes. Hope nobody minds. All right, I did it. I did it, I did it, I did it. Screw this. I really got a freaking mud battle staff. I actually hate it here. After claiming our mud battle staff, which by the way, has the exact same drop rate as a Seer's ring that is worth eight and a half million coins, it's time to move on to God Wars Dungeon 1. Let's start things off with Bandos. Odds I just pray melee and Zerk. All right, let's go. There's a rule in the Nuzlocke that you are allowed to claim the loot from minions, but only if you kill them once. So it's completely allowed for me to run the boss around the room and make sure that the minions spawn. Once I finish off the boss, I'll be allowed to kill each minion once. That being said, if I were to run around the boss forever, continually killing the minions over and over again, that would be against the rules. Okay, huge salvage is better than the stone spirits I got last time. I'll take it. Okay, first minion dropped a thousand coins. Second minion, an elite clue scroll. I'm actually a genius. Clue scroll completed. Give me something nice. In three, in two, in one. Uh, yeah, that's that's sick. That's really, really good. Yeah, this boss does have potential for some big loot though, because some of the drops here are like 15 mil. <laughs> 800 GP? Dream of having a death guard by Lejos. Looking slightly dead. I'm not even gonna pick them up. They're, they're worthless. Dude, that frag shot is massive. Walked bleeds are so nice. Like if you're using an undergeared setup, walked bleeds just carry so hard. Any droppers? Oh man. Two battle staves you shouldn't have. Armadal chest plate inbound, by the way. And the minion spawn at the perfect time too. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, 20k, you know what? Compared to stone spirits that have been plaguing me, I am completely happy. And the last one, and a thousand GP from you. All right, God Wars did not pay out the way that I wanted it to, but that's okay. After God Wars, let's head to the Ascension Dungeon and clear out all six Legios. Yeah, so the thing about the Legios is the closer you're standing to them, the more damage you get to deal. So on some of them, it's a little harder to kill them as quickly as this. If I get a Signet, that's technically worthless because you need all six to make a weapon, but everything else on the drop table is fair game. So let's get some loot. All right, that is the Legios completed. What do you got, free boss? Dude, are you kidding me? Wait, did we get seeds from four out of six? I think we did. After defeating all six Legios, my coin pouch is just over two million coins, which means I should be able to buy myself a Death Guard. But unfortunately, despite every single Death Guard in the game, from tier 20 all the way to tier 90, being cheaper than two mil on the Grand Exchange price, there isn't a single Death Guard in the Grand Exchange, so I'm basically doomed here. The plan is absolutely starting to fall apart, and we're gonna have to continue on without necromancy until the point that one of these weapons buys. The Exiled Caliphate Queen is a sneakily difficult boss, but we've been lucky with drops so far, so I've got a solid setup. Dual wield dragon daggers are good enough to make light work of the first phase, and then we've got our trusty black salamander to finish it off. Okay, we're probably okay. I just need to guzzle food. Alrighty, exiled KQ down. Honestly, better than anticipated. That's it? Oh, dude, okay, we lost money on that boss. Next up, we've got the queen black dragon. I think with a super anti-fire, which is expensive by the way, I reckon I can kill QBD with this setup. At least I've made 20 QBD guides, so you know, shouldn't run into any issues with the mechanics, I would hope. The other different thing between this time and last time is undead dragon hide is awesome. All right, QBD down, let's go. Ready? That's actually as bad as you can get. After the Queen Black Dragon, we need to head to the Corporeal Beast. But unlike last time where we had the worst experience of all time and the run almost ended, I can actually just buy a Masuda's War Spear this time around. So why don't we do that and get it done? Okay, instant core is kind of annoying, but I mean, I am kind of taking a lot of damage. Like I'm not gonna lie. Fortunately for me, Corp is also taking a little more damage. Wait, I'm kind of guzzling food right now. Hold up, please. Got it. Okay, what? I got a spirit shield. <laughs> With our brand new shiny spirit shield from the Corporeal Beast, it's time to take out all four God Wars Dungeon 1 hard mode bosses. I'm really hoping we get a big drop here so that we can get into necromancy, because after these four bosses, we're going to be going to Hermod, and if I can't afford any necromancy gear, we're going to be stuck going in with the tier 10 gear from the shop, and I genuinely have no idea if it's even possible to kill Hermod with that gear. This is going very well, until I run out of run energy. Whenever that happens, we're absolutely doomed. Like, we're just going to die instantly, but... Alright, Grodor, any droppers? Okay, I got coins and bones. That's alright. Minions gave me nothing. He's poisoned? Wow, a PR. I got three land and I'm seeds. How great. Wait, how do I fix it? I, I did it. I will gleefully accept some super ranging potions. Oh no, we're good. Dude, I hate walking mechanics, but <laughs> considering that I am not trying to die, <laughs> hide in the door. Help, you first. And what do we get? Two salvage? Two salvage. And of course we didn't get a unique from Hard Mode God Wars 1. So now we've got a bit of a situation. I have enough money for all of the necromancy gear, but none of it is buying in the Grand Exchange. So let's teleport to the city of Um, complete my own version of the Walk of Shame up to the necromancy shop and buy myself a beautiful set of tier 10 necromancy gear. This is about to be absolutely brutal. I do think minions are gonna be a little hard. Now nah, we can we can kill Hermod, we're fine. With tier 10s, okay, minions. Oh my God, the minions have so many life points. <laughs> ah, this is the worst. Oh, I almost perished, oops. Why is this the longest boss fight in the history of the game? Please drop like half a mil or something so I can just get a death guard. <laughs> I'm four minutes in. I actually hate this. Dude, I thought you guys said necromancy was overpowered. Any droppers? All right, see ya Hermod. Five minutes and 40 seconds, and I did get salvage. Absolutely beautiful, 100,000 coins in the bank. After getting that huge salvage drop from Hermod, I was finally able to buy myself a tier 90 death guard, which means we can start cruising with necromancy. But I have a feeling the Great Exchange isn't finished making this run extremely difficult. But for right now, we've got a tier 90 death guard and tier 10 everything else. So that's gonna be our gear for the next little bit. Next up, let's get into God Wars 2 and take on Vindicta, Hellwar, Twin Furies, and Greg. But unfortunately, no dice this time around. Still, the Nuzlocke continues with the Magister. I got instant minions, how? Oh no, I might be dead here. Wait, oh no, oh no. Oh no! Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, this is actually very bad. 
Bro, this guy's really healing right now. Can you not? Bro, no. What? I was not expecting to die to the Magister, but that's the first death of the run. This boss is extremely difficult when it's alive for a very long time. He deals significant damage, and his minions also have an absolute ton of life points, especially when your offhand is tier 10 and your armor is basically nothing. So why don't we splurge and buy 5 ectoplasm so that I can be aided by some conjurers. Because the damage conjurers can do is based on the stats of your lantern, and my lantern is tier 10, they aren't doing a whole lot, but it's absolutely better than nothing. I'm also gonna buy some necromancy runes so that I can use the Lord of Bones incantation, which is gonna maximize my damage potential by making my targets weaker. This is one of the few challenges where it's actually a really good item, and we're probably gonna be using this incantation a lot throughout the remainder of this challenge. It's expensive, but it's really, really good. Just guzzle food, dude, just guzzle. Get it to Death Mark, go, please! I got three seeds! This is the seed lock! After the Magister, it's time for the Rex Matriarchs. And just like in the previous attempt, they have to be done in one inventory. So let's get our Necronium back and get to work. If I can handle them without selling my Death Guard, that would be massive. But if I fail, I'll have to sell the Death Guard back to the Grand Exchange and try to buy it back later on. All right, let's go. Wait, we're kind of cooking right now. How, okay. Just need to take all the poison so that he doesn't heal. Move. Oh my God. Oh, 5k! Please no, please no, please no. Before the poison, please! No, please! Get there, got it. Okay. One done. Big drop, please. Two seeds! But what is happening? Bro, this is the worst timeline by like a long shot. As long as I do the mechanics right, I think we're okay here, honestly. This is gonna be really, really slow, but I'm glad I brought my good food though. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so my issue here is I'm just running low on prayer. My aura is gone. Okay, everything we did here was a huge skill issue. Please not seeds. 100k, okay, 100k is fine. So I'm just, I'm nervous about how far I can actually lure him. Why am I missing so much? Okay, he lives. Dude, where's greater sonic wave when you need it? Yeah, it's literally just, if I can hit the entangles, we're okay. If I can't, we're screwed. Yeah, I think I'm good, I think I'm good. At least I learned last time I only bought 20 nature runes. <laughs> and then by the end, I just, I couldn't even enter anymore. Yeah, we've got it. All right, it should be one more end and then we're done. All right, I think that finishes it. And that is Rex Matriarchs complete without selling my Death Guard. Any droppers, please, come on. Not seeds, just not seeds, man. Bruh. Oh, they're actually worth something. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice, we found the only valuable seed in the game, Pog. I'll take it, man, I'll take it. After the Rex Matriarchs, let's quickly handle Normal Mode Arch Glacier for a beautiful 500,000 GP loot, and then take on the hardest boss of all, the Grand Exchange. We failed miserably, so now we're gonna be heading into the Fight Kiln in full tier 10 Necromancy armor and a tier 10 lantern. But before that, a message from our sponsor that made this video possible. Unlike the Grand Exchange in this Nuzlocke, NordVPN, the sponsor of this video, actually works. A VPN or virtual private network is a service that gives you safe and private access to the internet by encrypting your connection. A VPN hides your IP address and online activity from spying eyes, which keeps your data safe. But Nord is more than just the fastest VPN in the world. It's a one-stop shop for online security and privacy. Nord's toggleable threat protection dashboard guards your every click while browsing. Downloading a file, threat protection checks it for malware. Clicking a link, threat protection blocks it if it leads to a malicious website. And if you're annoyed by pop-up ads, you guessed it, threat protection can block those too. So even for the moments where I don't need a VPN active, I've got threat protection on a lot of the time. By far my favorite thing about the threat protection dashboard, other than of course the protection, is the ability to view exactly what trackers and threats it's finding and blocking from each website you visit. It's more than just turning it on and imagining that it works, it actually gives you a detailed breakdown of exactly what it's doing. This lets you search, whitelist, and customize your security so that you end up with it exactly how you want it. And best of all, if you use my link, which is nordvpn.com forward slash rsguy, you'll get access to everything we just talked about and more for less than four bucks a month on a two-year plan. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't love it, you'll get your money back. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And now, we've got a fight kiln to complete. Welcome to the Death Guard only fight kiln. <laughs> this is gonna be so bad. You know what? I think Necro goes so hard that we might be fine. Okay, so far, like I'm actually crushing it. 
Wait, I don't think I had to break their shield. I think I could just hit them. Okay, these melee waves are absolutely free so far. Honestly, based on how well this fight kiln is going, I think I can do the Zuck run, like with the gear I have right now. What would happen if I just bloated each of these? Dude, bloat is so strong. It just ticks for so long. Ugh. Wait, how are you meleeing me? Brother? I get to eat. Okay, well, the foodless run is dead, but that's okay. I'm overloading. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't want to spend 20 minutes here. I mean, to be fair, I remember the last run, it was like 50, right? All right, Harakin. 36 minutes in this setup is insane. I used one singular food. Okay, I'm starting to think necromancy good. I have no idea how this setup is good enough for the fight kiln, but I think ignoring all of the monster specific weaknesses makes necromancy extremely powerful here. So with my brand new necromancy style kiln cape, it's time to care pack my stuff up and head to the node in front. Oh man, I'm hitting two Ks. If I can get by without overloading again, I'm, I'm gonna send it. Alternatively, I can just warp time and then dump everything. Okay, what about rebalancing conjures to help you in the real world. So the ghost tells you not to go back to your toxic ex. The zombie helps you with your taxes. And the skeleton can be in your closet helping you with wardrobe. What do you guys think? Do you guys like my, my necro rebalance? How much is that? Dude, that's not... It's not bad. It's not bad for normal mode, but I don't know if it's enough. I guess we're gonna find out. It feels like we're off to a pretty strong start to the Snuzlocke, but the next set of bosses get progressively harder and harder. And very quickly, we're going to go from some of the easiest bosses in the game to the mid game and into the end game very, very quickly. So we need to get some drops soon or we're going to be in trouble. Get ready. Stunlock. 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 Wait, I'm actually juiceless. Where's the damage? Help. We're not ready for 4k. That's for darn sure. Dude, I'm just straight up guzzling food right now. Instantly. 0% Telos doesn't really have drops, but that is 0% Telos completed. Weirdly precarious by the end, actually. I think we did great until P4 started, but as soon as P4 started, a bit of danger. That's actually solid. After a 0% enraged Telos kill, let's cruise to an easy kill at Challenge Mode Greg, Challenge Mode Hellwer, what the heck? and at the Challenge Mode Twin Furies. Following up those three, of course, we've got Challenge Mode Vindicta, which is a potential run killer. See, last time we did this with a magic setup, we had high melee defense, and I was also using Animate Dead to take even less damage. But this time around, I'm stuck in tier 10 necromancy gear because the Grand Exchange doesn't work, so I'm gonna get absolutely blasted. Bro, I'm getting nibbled. I'm getting hit 6,000 damage every two seconds. I'm not overloaded. Rejuvenate, please. Deathmark, go. <sighs> After a near-death experience at Challenge Mode Vindicta, it's time for Araxi. Fortunately, paths two and three are open, so I won't have any minions to deal with, and this should be a piece of cake. Range. Oh, bro, he's hard to hit, though. I think I want to re-overload. Because, yeah, there's a stat drain. Oh, my living death is on cooldown. Oh, that's really awkward. Okay, we're fine. It's chill. The spider has been successfully squeezed. We got to loot quick, though, because our next kill is next. And I'm currently overloaded, and I want to save the dose. So let's loot really quick here. What do you got, food boss? Are you serious right now? At Solo Next, it turns out that weapons are all you need, and even in the tier 10 armor, we absolutely crush this. I'm boning? I'm glad I boned. Whew. Yeah, it'll make the later phases safer too. Dude, when all my conjures die, this is gonna be a lot worse, I think. I just unicycled blood phase! I had to use bug abuse last time. Reflect, bang, he lives. Big Zara's phase. Oh yeah, Next is very hit capped here, so I think it's better to bloat than anything else. Nex is currently gaining life points on me. <laughs> Next, what do you got for your boss? Please, something better than the U seeds we got last time. Come on. After collecting our dragon stones from Nex, the next boss on the list is the Calphite King. This boss is easy as long as you can deal with the green attack, so let's get it done. A Dragor weapon, which is a 1 in 40 drop, would be absolutely amazing right now, as Raziel is on the horizon, and if I have to do a Raziel kill in tier 10 armor, there's almost no way we're going to be able to survive. What? Oh my god. Take the sign. KK decided to skip the attack before the green so that I couldn't stun. Should I do death mark? Yeah. Bye. That is solo Cal Viking dud. Any drops? Bro, why am I getting seeds at every boss? <laughs> After the Calphite King, we've got to fight normal mode Zamorak, which is basically free money. Wait, do you guys think I could use the power of friendship and necromancy to get mechanic skips here? Maybe one mechanic per phase? One mechanic per phase would be good. This is definitely an overload boss though. Please phase it. Death guard, bang. Okay. 
It's like 5k every time I ghost, right? That's not that bad. I actually have zero damage output. Can you leave me alone? Yeah, that was a little harder than anticipated. I think on the later pads, it got a little spooky. Any droppers? 2.6 mil is unreal at this stage of the Nuzlocke, because next on the list, we've got to deal with 100% Enraged Telos. The best drop at 100% Enraged Telos is a dormant Saren Godbow, which is worth over a billion coins, but it is extremely rare, and at this Enrage, it comes at a drop rate of a 1 in a 3024. But still, it'd be pretty cool to get one, and that would be the entire Nuzlocke sorted. Think I can do last phase with no overload? I think so. Wait, so much power skip? Dude, we're actually cracked. Holy moly. Brother, get back. Wait, I just did a five second barricade. I just really didn't want to overload, you know? All right, I did it. 100% Telos defeated. What do you got for you, boss? But of course, we're getting seeds for what feels like the 30th time this run. And the next boss fight on the list is Raziel. So this very well could be the end for us. All right, I've been thwarted by the Grand Exchange. We're gonna just stay on tier 10, I guess. <laughs> Raziel without a salve amulet, without armor, and without a Zuck cape is absolutely nuts as an undertaking. So we need to throw out everything we thought we knew about this boss and just try to survive. We're gonna be using a Hellhound, we're gonna pop the Aegis Aura for even more damage reduction, and we just need to believe. Help me. I don't even have hit chance. Oh my goodness, I need to bone. Like, am I ever even gonna get to attack the boss? He's spawning minions faster than I can kill them. Does not look possible at all. Dude, look at all the freaking minions, bro. This is a, apparently nine bosses easier than normal mode for cap. <laughs> Eat bees. I think the last phase will probably be easier than this. I'm just glad minions is, is, is kill. Dude, the attack range makes this really hard too, eh? Actually, eat bees. Oh my god! Are you- I did that?! For seeds?! I can't believe I just did all of that for a shipment of Torstal Seeds. The fight of my life for Torstal Seeds. This really is the seed run. And considering Torstal Seeds are worth almost nothing, we're heading to Raksha with the exact same setup. But Raksha in this gear is significantly easier than it was in the last video, so it's about twice as fast as last time. I will happily take the successful kill, the progress in the Nuzlocke, and the intrusive thoughts about how armor doesn't really matter in this game. Any droppers? Bang! Uh, you know what? Salvage is a good drop. With our Orc Alchem Salvage in hand, it's time for a thousand percent Enraged Glacor. This isn't likely to get us anything good, but the next boss is Zuck, and I'm currently wearing effectively no armor, so I'm gonna take whatever I can get. Whoa! There's a sign. Yeah, that's the thing about Glacier, man. Like, it's not per se a hard boss, but you do have to do everything right for an extended, extended period of time. All right, bye, Glacier. Ready for the seed drop? That is a great drop, actually. You know what? I take it back. It's still worse than normal mode drops, but you know. Okay, genuine question. Is this Zuck setup more scuffed than the last one? I honestly can't decide. We've got two great weapons, and then absolutely every single other equipment slot is absolute garbage. I'm gonna get shredded here, so let's try to kill everything as soon as it spawns so that it doesn't have a chance to kill me first. <laughs> okay, thanks, Necromancy. <laughs> Dude, not having to worry about splashing makes that so much easier. Oh God, they're hitting me at thousands. There's a chance this does not, like I, I think I'll be okay, but we need to get to the Zuck part ASAP. Whoa, I'm dying. Huh, eat food quickly. Dude, these tentacles need to leave me alone. I figured they'd be really bad. They were, they were really bad. Now, not that I reckon this part's gonna be easy, but I think it's gonna be easier. I, I'm getting, I'm getting melted. Okay, easy. Yeah, yeet. Pizza time is gonna be fine. I'm not worried about pizza time. I'm worried about the rest of the time. <laughs> I'm just gonna spam a bunch of defensives and then hopefully be fine. Yeah, this is kind of awful, actually. I did it. On the negative side, no Zuck unique drop, but on the bright side, a 27 minute kill is crazy fast. I feel good about that. Let's search the chest and see what's in it. You know what? Four mil and an elite clue. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Five different kinds of seeds, but that's solid. We get a beautiful Necromancy Zuck Cape. That's a huge DPS increase. That's gonna make a big difference to the rest of this. It has more armor rating than my robe top. <laughs> with Zuck out of the way and a beautiful Zuck Cape that happens to have better stats than my robe top, let's go do our elite clue. But before we do that, 30 minutes into the video, we have our first armor upgrade. The Grand Exchange has decided to bless us this day with a beautiful, shiny, tier 90 Death Warden hood. We spent 2.3 million coins on it, which is money well spent in my book. Even though it isn't augmentable, it's got a ton of armor rating and life point bonus, and I need all the help I can get. In three, in two, in one, bang. Wait, that's actually an insane clue scroll. 
Why did I kill Raziel for 40 Torstal Seeds when I could have done a singular clue scroll? for 3 million big ones. After my short but successful career as a cluer, we snagged a pair of gloves, and now it's time to get into an Elite Dungeon Trilogy run. I have no idea how much GP I'm gonna need to start buying necromancy armor, but I know that we're getting into the end game and there's a limit on how far my current setup is gonna take me. These next three Elite Dungeons are extremely important because even if I hit the minimum drop roll at Elite Dungeons 1 and 2, that should still be about 10 million coins in my pocket. If I manage to get something that isn't the minimum roll for once, we're gonna be absolutely gaming. Wow, two whole common relics? And six onyx dust. Maybe he'll pulverize me here, that'd be good actually. All right, Masuda, if you wanna give me a spear, I, I would take one, I'm just saying. 56 onyx dust? Wait, that's like a, that's a crazy high roll. All right, wish me luck, guys. This is a, a big, big moment in this Nuzlocke. This is pretty make or break for us. <laughs> And of course, we min rolled Elite Dungeon 1, but even with the minimum drop, we have enough money and enough luck with the Grand Exchange to buy a tier 70 Death Dealer robe top for a total price of 2.3 million gold. The boots also bought in the middle of the run, so we're starting to really build out an incredible necromancy setup. Getting this robe top is huge, because even though I'd prefer the tank setup, this is augmentable, which is going to be extremely important later on. Perks are one of the biggest ways to reduce the damage you're taking and deal more damage, so this is a vital upgrade. You know what? I think I want a skeleton for this. Wait, how do I not have hit chance? I'm not overloaded. Activate Dragon Sigil? Go. Go. Wait, this is so much easier? Oh, yeah. Now this I can get behind. Dude, when I did this in the last Nuzlocke attempt, it was a three cycle. Bye. Did I win? Um, I got unaccessed. Not a great drop, but you know, drops to drop in. I'll take it. All right, team. Ow! Bro, what is that rubber band? Don't you dare mail at me from here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I will say doing a living death rotation without an adren pot is sort of bad, but I'm not exactly schmoovin' right now. Like, I'm, I'm definitely not on a pace, you know? Even though my gear looks okay, like, I don't think I'm doing 1k Telos with this setup, you know? <laughs> definitely not doing 4k with this setup. I've also gone from having to guzzle food to not needing any food thanks to the ghost. Any codices in chat? But alas, Onyx Dust. This is one where I probably should have bought an Adrenaline Potion. Surely that doesn't hit me, does it? No, no way. Dude, I just love the hitboxes in this game. This is, this is all good. All right, I'm gonna go AFK, drink some water. Surely that's last jump. Bro, are you kidding me? Why is this phase so long? It is a little brutal that this exists. Alrighty. This, if I get a mineral here, this will be four elite dungeon runs in Nuzlocke's in a row where I've mineraled. Please, no, something good. Go, please. To the surprise of absolutely nobody at this point, we min rolled Elite Dungeon 2 as well. But we've still got to do Elite Dungeon 3, which could come in clutch, with a 1 in 55 chance to get myself an elusive Eldritch Crossbow piece, which is worth hundreds of millions of gold. You know what, I'm apotting. We're going for a one cycle here. I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but we're sure as heck gonna try. What did I get? You know what? 91k from the snake is not terrible. Okay, Tarek it without a salve amulet. Wish me luck. It is weird not hitting like a bus at this boss. I'm so used to being positively juiced. Okay, love that I just yeeted away all my adrenaline. It is so crazy how overpowered the ghost is as a way to passively heal. Like without the ghost, I would have eaten half my invent of food right now. This is where Corruption Blast would be like pretty, pretty helpful, maybe. Help me, help me. Okay, I take back everything I said about this being easy. This Terracate kill was like a little tough, man. Like we actually ate like a ton of food there. All right, bye Terracate. Any drops? Wait. Six Blackstone Hearts is actually very good. Let's get it. Okay, so we actually almost phased that in time. That's not bad. Oh no, wait. I am kind of selling here. Bloat is so strong. Dude, it's still going. Okay, Bloat is an absolute ambassador killer. I'm not getting that one. No, it's okay. Doesn't matter. Easy game. There's a really interesting strategy at the Ambassador where on the final phase, you can automatically block all of the heal smokes by spam clicking directly underneath the boss. This just means I don't have to run around in a circle for the entire phase, which is nice. All right, bye Ambi. What do you got for your boss? Bang. Um, okay, that's actually a terrible drop. My goodness. What's the value on that? They're two K each. Elite dungeons completed. Let's loot the elite chest. See what it uh, gives us. Dude, that's literally 
The same amount of scales for my full ED1 run. That's actually a ton of money. This might be the worst loot I've ever seen, but we have just enough money to snag a pair of tier 70 necromancy pants, which means finally, after all of those grand exchange issues, we have a full set of necromancy gear, which means it's time to cruise. Yeah, I've worked out this really, really hard. In the last video, normal mode Vorkath was the fight for my life, but this time around, we've got necromancy and we're absolutely flying. It was a 13 minute kill where I used a full invent of food last time. Bye. All right, Zemo, what do you got for your boss? Claim loot. And now we prage. Yeah, the chance of a drop on this is pretty low, so I don't have high hopes, but maybe we'll get something nice. Go. <laughs> you know what? At least it wasn't seeds. That's actually a pretty garbage loot, but it's fine. The loot wasn't anything special, but I'll take whatever I can get, because right now we're in the middle of the mid game, where there are a chunk of similarly difficult bosses back to back to back. But we don't win this challenge unless I can handle bosses like 1000% Enraged Zamorak, 4000% Enraged Telos, and Solo Virago, and there are an absolute ton of upgrades I'm gonna need to be able to get those bosses done. Next up on the list, we've got 100% Zamorak to deal with. Oh, I don't have Vuln Bombs. That's probably a bit of an L, but I think I'm okay. I'm also, I think, very likely getting special attacks here, and I'm totally okay with that. <gasps> I'm not overloaded! Uh, I love how much easier this is gonna be with the overload. What? Oh no. Okay, there's a right way to navigate this and a wrong way to navigate this, and I'm doing it the wrong way. Okay, the worst thing that could happen here is it's not gonna pop <clears throat> more. Oh no, it did. Holy crap! That's an annoying spec. Oh, I didn't stack Storm Shards. Um, shoot. Okay, well, surely it's too late now for Storm Shards. So what I will instead be doing is, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna YOLO it and hope for the best, like we usually do. Okay, Zami did pick the B, which does benefit me. Where's the death mark? Got it. Oh my god, if I had one cycle, I was dead. Easy one cycle. Nobody does that like he does. All right, give me five mil. Oh, that's huge. I did get three separate seed drops, but we're honestly not even gonna dwell on that. With 100% of Rage Zamorak cleared and a beautiful five million coins added to my coin pouch, let's head to the boss that caused the most issues in the last run, Solo Rise of the Six. With ranged, this took me over two hours to complete and a 30 plus failures. But with Necromancy, let's get it done on the literal first try. So far, this is looking slightly easier for sure. Oh, we're fine. Ready? Bang! It nulled! No way. Got it. <laughs> Literally first try with Necro. Without Necro, it was two hours of attempts. Uh, such an easy game. Light work. Ready for the shield? Bang! Okay, that's not a shield, but that's actually decent. Although only one energy is, is less good, but the, the Onyx Bolts are okay. With Rise of the Six out of the way, let's head into Elder God Wars for hard mode Carapac and then 2000% Enrage Arch Glacor. Should be light work with this setup, let's take it slow and safe. It's Carapacking time. Dude, not having Vuln, I think by this point in the last run, I was using Vuln, but also if you're expecting lightning skips, this is, this is not where we're gonna get lightning skips. There's a lot of damage to do. For full tank gear, no Cinder Banes. I think Cinder Banes do a sneaky amount of damage. I honestly might not even resummon the Skeleton. I'll just do the Ghost. Wait, can I double Skulls like that and they're both just gonna go? Oh, they are. Ooh. Dude, Warp Time at Care Pack is so strong. I just get to spam Skulls to my heart's content. Uh-oh. Whoop. I think what I wanna do here is I want to Skulls instantly. Double extended Devo. Whoa, it is, what? No shot. Where's my Devo? I'm actually annoyed. I hit the button too. Are you guys ready for like the worst excuse, but it's it's actually what happened. So to hit my ult key, I curl my thumb back and hit it like that for all my defensives. But my thumb is in a bandage and I didn't feel the tactile clickiness. That's what happened. You didn't hit ult, so you actually fired finger of death. Wait, that's actually proof. Definitive proof that my excuse was legit. Carapac, I was not familiar with your game. <laughs> it's definitely just the bad food. Sea turtles were not meant for this leg of the journey. This was a little bit of potentially some overconfidence. All right, Carapac, what do you got for your blast? Any droppers? That might be... Wait, that's it? Okay, hard mode Carapac did not pay out. Maybe I got a Pernix Hoover piece. Bang. Nice. I got a seed that's worth 20k. 2000% in rage. How bad are the autos gonna be? Ha! That bad? Oh my god. I'm gonna die. I'm so gonna die. <gasps> Kate clears. I'm dead. 
I'm side. I didn't know Cade cleared. I'm dead. <laughs> I just can't believe those auto attacks. All right, this is going way better. We're fine. This is kind of a funny one because I think Gano and Anime Dead made it way easier. It's a flurry. Okay. Whew. Well, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? And then your... No, my prayer got smited. I'm the worst. I'm not overloaded, but like, I just don't want to, you know? Bye. That is two carriage clay sword taken down. All right, did I win? <laughs> nice! With a beautiful, crisp 200 gold in hand from 2000% in reach Archglacor, let's finally get hard mode Zuck done. And just for fun, let's try to do it flawless. Also, shout out to the sea turtles that have powered this entire run. They're dirt cheap, they're high healing, and they're getting the job done. Necromancy makes Zuck just a completely different boss encounter. Please get it. Help! I'm a juicer. I'm actually a juicer. Holy necromancy. I also do realize I'm missing the tier 90 tank legs and maybe it's a good idea to grab those too. I didn't realize it was challenge wave. Oh my God. Okay, it's probably fine. I just think it's wild that necro can do 100K damage like this. Wait, why am I like this? Cade. <gasps> oh! What a gosh darn clutch. Whoa, 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 boof. That's wild, a 6K res? All right, I'm not gonna do anything too fancy here. Not worth the risk. I'm actually not doing great on the prayer front here. I think a couple of Vuln Bombs could, could have been a good idea. Okay, this so far seems very safe, which is really good. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm very, very pleased with that, actually. Uh, I'm not gonna bother death marking. I don't think I need to. We're doing great. Dude, pizza time? I can now just do it with basics. Dude, as if we're doing a, I mean, I guess I'm not shocked that we're doing a flawless hard mode Zuck here, but feels good, man. The last phase of Zuck is really just shape simulator. What do you got for me, boss? Please, this would be such a good time for a drop. Ready? Bang. And bang. Nope. 14 ceramic skills. Those are worth 20k each. I got nothing. I did get a reroll, which is good, but I got, I got nothing from Zuck. <laughs> The best thing we got from hard mode Zuck is definitely that reroll die, because we still have 500% and 1000% enraged Zamrock to take care of later in the challenge. But on the short term, it's time for us to solo Solak. Before we head in, let's spend half a million coins on a Moonstone Amulet, which is going to increase the damage of my Necromancy Conjures. This thing isn't nearly as good as something like an Essence of Finality or an Amulet of Souls, but both of those upgrades are well out of my price range, so this is going to have to do for now. I'm not even going to bother vaulting this phase. Wait, this is so nice? for just uh, for cooking these things. <laughs> okay, so far, this is looking better than other combat styles for sure. It's interesting though. I still feel like I have a lot of damage to do. It's probably Threads, Arms, Scythe Legs. Okay, not perfect, but <laughs> I mean, compared to the magic run, it's, it's pretty clean. I think we're fine. I'm failing this. No, help me. Are you kidding me? Where did my death mark go? Did I not invoke death? I love that I still didn't have to eat food there because I'm using necromancy. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter because I'm actually close to phasing. Wait, can I just phase it right now, please? I don't think I have enough damage to phase it right now. No way. Are you kidding me? Okay, Solak, you can eat bees, genuinely. As if I failed arms and legs twice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> nice. Okay, that was surprisingly awful. I'm not going to come close to killing the core. Seven and a half minutes in, and we're on to phase two, baby. <laughs> it's not like it had to be a perfect kill. I'm also on penance. All right, I even used a Vuln Bomb here. Just because if I get a frail creatures, it's time to die situation, that's really embarrassing. Dude, I'm impressing myself right now with how terribly I'm handling all of this. I do have to say, though, like, it's not phasing <laughs> the way that I thought it would. No! <laughs> I got the lame spec. <laughs> this maybe hasn't been my best work. In our previous Nuzlocke, my damage output was so low that instead of going into phase four and inevitably dying, I had to spend a full hour in phase three, dealing 1000 times reduced damage in order to slowly but surely whittle away at the boss's HP so that once I started phase four, I'd be able to finish off the phase before getting insta-killed. But this time around, we're using necromancy, so I think it's gonna be a bit of a different story. This time around, all we're gonna do is a pre-shatter. 
How this works is Solak has an HP cap at 200,000 life points, but you're able to use one ability of any kind in order to cross that threshold, and that ability will still deal full damage. So if you get the boss to just over 200,000 life points, and then you use a very high damaging ability like Shatter, it's gonna deal with full damage, which is gonna give us a bit of a head start on the last phase. Bang! Beautiful. Now that we've got our pre-shatter, it's time to phase the boss, clear out Erethor, and take care of phase four. Yeah, so here, as long as I living death with A-pot, like, I, I should be fine. Wait, I haven't been stacking shards. I'm stupid. I just need a couple more shards. With the power of Deathmark and a pre-shatter, this should be absolutely free, which means I don't have to spend a full hour in phase three like I did last time. But it turns out when you apply a death mark on phase one, it disappears after 10 minutes. And because of that, we may not actually have the power of death mark. Surely. Where's my death mark? Wait, where's my death mark? What the hell? Death mark? Oh my God, it wore out because my kill was so slow. Oh my God. Okay, it died. It's fine. It, it's fine. My heart hurts. Did I win? I got an Onyx and a Grim Page. You know what? I'm okay with that. Still, Solo Solak was absolutely light work for the Necromancer. After Solo Solak, we're into the final few bosses of the Nuzlocke, and they get significantly harder from this point on, starting off with 500% Enraged Zamorak. Before we head in, I'm gonna buy myself a Spectral Spirit Shield, which has the ability to soak up up to 30% of incoming damage. I have a feeling we're gonna be doing a little bit of bomb tanking, so we're gonna need this thing. I mean, as long as I get it out of red HP, it's probably fine. Yeah. One thing I do like is I am not taking very much damage, and that seems perfect for me. It feels weird to be using a Vuln Bomb every pad here, but um, what do I want to do here? Probably just deeps, yeah. Yeah, see, that's where the Arcane is really nice. Also, I've used zero food so far. Enhanced Devota, just save me. Oh no, I'm getting another spec. Quickly, damage, please. I hate it here. Help. Okay, that hurt. Okay, double stick is not great, actually, for me. I don't have Disruption Shield. Okay, quick pause, it looks like the Spirit Shield was an extremely good purchase to make, because if you look at the amount of damage I'm currently taking with the Spirit Shield on, if you added 30% more damage to that, well, I'm being sent directly to Death's office. So definitely a good purchase, and it was more than worth the money. I tanked that with the Spirit Shield, and only with the Spirit Shield. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, that's five minutes of damage done. Oh, that was so clean. All right, that was well thought out. And give me like six mil would be good. Eight and a half mil is great. Okay, I saw the seeds first and I was like, oh no. And just like that, we've got ourselves a 500% enraged Zamorak kill. After Zamorak, let's send hard mode Vorkath. Without a salve amulet, we're still in a bit of damage deficit, but we should be able to take this nice and slow and get it done. Unlike last time where I needed to spend a ton of GP on a Blood Reaver to survive, we have a Ghost. And because of that, let's get the Hellhound out and take this thing nice and easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was rude. Yeah, I do think I can just kill the boss though, which is really awesome. What? I hit the button. I'm very confused. Whoa. This is really not a boss for low HP camping, is it? It doesn't seem like it is. Dude, I don't even know what's hitting me right now. Dude, I love the part where he actually says the cut them down line. Don't worry too much about the kill time. The kill time is very irrelevant. I'm out of spirit runes. Oh God. Dude, they have so many life points. Like everything in this fight has so many freaking life points. And that is hard mode workout completed. Oh, he almost bopped me right at the end. So that was seven minutes faster than the kill we did in our last Nuzlocke. So we're really hoping for a big loot from this. That boss was was kind of hard, but uh, we'll see what it is for us in three, in two, in one. Unlucky, dude, if we've gotten spikes. With hard mode Vorkath out of the way, it's time for a thousand percent enraged Telos. This is significantly harder than 100%, but we've got Necromancy on our side. And unlike at 100% enrage, the chance of receiving a dormant Saren Godbow and instantly winning the Nuzlocke is now a one in 437. That's still rare, but it's a lot more winnable than before. I didn't keep on my sticky bombs. Shoot. Oh my god, they're broken. So they're only going... 
I, I think I'm gonna die this kill. <gasps> I don't have meat prey! This is such a, this is such a failed kill. I'm about to get absolutely smoked. I'm dead. I'm about to get new. Oh my god! I'm getting nuked again. <laughs> Help! You suck. Okay. Well. I'm actually cracked. Terrible news for the haters, but we're kind of doing well right now. And I got the losses life transfer. Dude, I might be fine. I just, I don't have mage prey. So I just need to remember I can't prayer flick at all. Oh no, we're dead. <laughs> okay, well. I don't have mage prey. Help. I think I'm hit up here again. Okay, so that was without proper sticky bombs or magic prey. 1k Telos, piece of cake. All right, give me my dragon stones. <laughs> With our dragon stones in hand, it's time for what I believe could be the hardest boss in the entire challenge. This is the point that we failed at last time, and I'm worried we could be met with the same fate here. I need darkness too, by the way, because the blue bombs can actually splash, which is weird, but they can. I think my blood reaver is juicing too hard right now. Based on this, for phase five, I'm gonna have to bone him like five times before I have a good hit chance. I actually don't know what to do for bring him down. Uh, it's probably just skulls, death guard. I think I'm safe. Yeah, I'm safe. No! My Reaver died. That's awful. I'm kind of getting blasted here, but we're okay. I mean, maybe I should have kept the hell out for this. Dude, look at my food situation. That's not good, man. Yeah, I'm just going to need a very good rotation, and I think I can do it. See, solo Virago with Necromancy isn't too bad, but Virago has six different versions depending on what week it is, and this happens to be Green Bomb, one of the hardest ones. On phase five, every 30 seconds or so, Virago will launch a green bomb at your character, and it's gonna hit you for 10,000 unblockable damage and disable all of your defensive abilities as well. This means that if I'm gonna go slow and steady, I'm gonna have to tank probably 100,000 damage of green bombs without running out of supplies or dying. Necromancy is strong, but is it stronger than Virago? Come on, one more, please. I hate it here. Okay, so my hit chance should now be high enough that I should have the ability to start cooking. My familiar died. Miss me with that mission failed. We're fine. All right, we hit the cade. We're chilling. Whoo, solo Virago done on Green Bob. It looks like that answers the question. And although this was a very difficult boss fight, Necromancy is in fact more powerful than Green Bomb Virago. This means we're now into the final three bosses. We've got 2,000% Enraged Telos, 1,000% Enraged Zamorak, and then last but not least, 4,000% Enraged Telos to finish off the entire Nuzlocke. So with that said, welcome to the grand finale. All right, I'm overloaded. I'm gonna cast Darkness. So for 2K, I get a little fancy with it. Oh my God, I dodged it. <laughs> no, my residence. <gasps> I messed up. I screwed this up so bad. I'm dead. Just kidding. I'm, I'm alive. I unbound my stun. <laughs> I just need a dren, please. Oh, okay. This is actually. Can I death guard with 22.6? Yo, I'm going to a dren pot just in case. I'm just scared. I'm fine with that. See, one of the things I really love about Telos is that, like, the barrier to entry for Telosing is knowing how Telos works. As long as you know how Telos works, you can Telos. It's, it's, there are no gear checks. Also, my Reaver is dead, but I think it's fine. All right, that's 2K Telos, first try. Beautiful. A goodly kill. Any droppers? Nope. <laughs> Necromancy is so well suited for this boss fight. The DPS checks were nothing to worry about. The minions were nothing to worry about. And we absolutely cruised to this, actually getting it done on the very first attempt. But are we going to be able to handle a thousand percent in Rage Zamorak? Let's find out. 1k Zamorak is a lot more difficult than 500% because at the lower enrages, you can skip most of the mechanics, but all of that changes as soon as you hit 900% enrage. At that point, you lose the ability to DPS through the gray HP between phases, which means as soon as you cross 900%, it becomes a whole different boss fight. And instead of dealing with almost no mechanics throughout the entire fight, you're going to have to deal with at least three mechanics every single phase. 
In addition to this, Phase 7 now has the maximum amount of life points. It stops scaling at this point, which means I've got to deal 250,000 damage instead of the 166,000 damage that I had to deal with at 500%. Considering how close the 500% enrage kill was, this could be extremely tough. Something I learned from the last run is that GP for supplies is extremely important. So instead of trying to force an upgrade with the last 8 million coins that I have, I'm going to hold it and spend it on ectoplasm, necromancy runes, vulnerability bombs, and penance powder. So that if I fail, I can continue going back until the point that we can hopefully get this thing done. I don't want a repeat of last time where I failed when I ran out of supplies. After our first cycle, Zamrock has 170,000 life points remaining, which means I'm gonna have to do this much damage in like three or four abilities at most before an 100,000 damage bomb connects with my face. I don't have high hopes for this one, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna kill the B rune even though it wasn't chosen so that I can safely use Death Skulls to give me a little bit of extra damage, so we're really pulling out all of the stops here. If we can get Zamrock to below 30,000 life points, Deathmark is gonna finish the job and we're gonna be able to move on to the final boss. But unfortunately, we just didn't have enough damage. So let's go back and see if we can do a little bit more damage on the first cycle. This time around, the boss is at 130,000 life points after the first cycle, which means if I don't make a mistake, we have enough damage to get this done. One K, please, I got it. Oh my God, that was so close. That was 1k off! Oh my god. Okay, I thought it was gonna be way safer than that, and it was not it was not safe the way I wanted it to be. So let's see what the loot is. 13 mil. Can I really reroll 13 mil? I could use 13 mil. I think if I if I keep the 13 mil, that's enough money to win. Oh god. Alright, in three. In two. In one! <laughs> Alright, I'll take my 10 mil. And now it's time for the final challenge of the Nuzlocke, which is 4,000% Enraged Telos. As far as strategies go, we're going to be using a Hellhound as well as the Aegis Aura to give me an absolute ton of damage reduction, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to survive Telos's extremely damaging auto attacks. Assuming I'm able to execute the phases correctly, we should be able to get this done. If I can get this one kill, we win the Nuzlocke. Haven't been hit by an auto yet, so I don't know what it's going to hit, but this should be free. Nicely done. Okay, good tendril. So at 4k, it's 30,000 damage. So that was skulls of volley. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. Whoa, okay. Eat food. <laughs> that should have hit me way higher though. I'm wondering if my Leviathan ring cracked. Because the autos should be like at least 20k. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining at all. I am very happy not taking very much damage. Oh no, I messed up. I didn't give myself enough souls. Okay, this is gonna be bad. And I don't have conjures. Okay, so this is gonna be really bad, probably. Oh my god, he walked my bomb. Y'all see how shifty that was? How am I alive right now? Get in the foot! So I'm really trying to do enough damage here to tendril skip, and I just don't think it's happening. Big res. Come on. <gasps> I disruption shielded the nuke. I could tell a nuke was happening. Sometimes I'm just a knower, man. <gasps> oh, oh my God. <sighs> Everything is perfectly fine. Bye. <laughs> okay, that's awful. Bro, where's my lantern? I went in lanternless? I'm probably dead here, I think. What? Bro. And double death mark to finish it off. See you, idiot. <laughs> that is a Nuzlocke completed. <laughs> Very scuffed P5. Can I say, I got Volcanics every single P5 on this entire challenge. Absolutely wild. But that is the Nuzlocke completed. We can head into the sheet, we can click off the final boss, and we can claim our seeds. This was the seed run. Meant to be. Ready? Okay, that is almost less fun than seeds. Seeds are worth less, but would have been more fun because, like, at least, you know, like, with the challenge and... It, it would have made sense, and... So, there you have it. I guess necromancy does make a difference. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.